Hey, this is Notzer, and today we're going to be taking a look once again at the public test server 10.0 and the new commander skills. Uh, this time we're going to be checking out the anti-concealment cruiser build. Uh, this is a brand new build that has only been made possible by a couple new skills. Uh, we have Demolition Expert, which increases the damage of HE and SAP by 10%. But it also penalizes your detection by 15%, so it makes you more detected. And there's another skill, a four-point skill, that increases the rate of fire of your ship when an enemy ship is within your standard detection range. So using these two together, you can bloom out your base detection and basically encompass almost any enemy ship that would be in the game. I, you'll see at the end of this, I actually get my concealment down to 17.9 kilometers, 100 meters worse than the base range of my build. But this is an all-in build. This has every rate of fire skill that you could take. We're using Gunther Luchens, and Luchens, one of his big benefits is for a cruiser, is the rate of fire increase. If you land 160 shells, you get a damage reload buff, and that's really nice. On top of everything else, uh, you can see what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to be the absolute maximum long-range damage output in the game. And uh, I wanted to see how the Hindenburg could work. Uh, because, you know, players could probably look at the Hindenburg and say, the HE shell damage is really low. Of course, the HE penetration is very high, over 50. So, you know, that's something that you don't have to worry about. You never have to take IFHE to be effective with the Hindenburg. Um, but having access to a unique commander such as Luchens, who, you know, pretty much encourages a rate of fire build, uh, going the other rate of fire skills, and uh, using these two new commander skills, you can kind of work it into a previous design. Because you pretty much just ignore all of the concealment skills, or the modules even. Uh, I actually took the faster rudder shift in slot 5 instead of concealment in order to get my concealment this bad and you can see it plainly on the the mini map my concealment my base concealment is nearly exactly the same range as my guns so it's uh, kind of comical uh, to just sail into an area and instantly be spotted uh, this is obviously not a build that you could play solo and be effective in all situations but this is a build that is exciting because it's introducing a archetype that didn't really exist before. There wasn't any incentive to go anti-concealment, uh, but there now is a proper reason to maybe omit concealment from your build. Uh, I find it curious that Wargaming only wanted to do this for cruisers. Um, maybe there should be skills like this for all class of ships so that players who maybe don't want to go concealment can have a legitimate design that they can reference and say, you know, I'm trying to do this. You know, maybe that would end up working out better. Because I do think that this is one of the few successes of the new design, is introducing this anti-concealment focus. It makes the cruiser consider, you know, do I want to be absolutely concealed? Or do I want to try and leverage long-range fire? If I'm always going to be firing my gun and I'm always detected, then concealment is irrelevant, you know? If you notice, my gun bloom, it doesn't change. It's exactly the same, whether I'm firing or not. So, pretty much you just fire on cooldown, because it's always going to have the same concealment. Uh, it's kind of hilarious that it works this way. But, you know, so far, we're doing okay. I mean, there's bots in this game, and they're easy to hit. Uh, but battleships are easy to hit for the Hindenburg. It's got really great gun velocity for what it is. It is a really effective ship. It's one of the reasons why I was very easy for me to get rank one last season because it counters the petros and the stalingrads and you know the meta defining ships as they say really well so i was excited to possibly have a build that uh you know could be effective in maybe a team but definitely not in a one versus one or a three versus three you probably would never want to go this in such a small matchup uh, but if you have aircraft carriers and destroyers and battleships and other cruisers that are more concealed than you, then there's a huge source of spotting available for you. So you don't necessarily have to risk yourself. All there has to be is a ship 
spotted inside of my gun range, basically. And if there's a ship spotted inside of my gun range, then I benefit from that reload boost. But I'll say the same thing that I've said in all my other videos so far. There really needs to be a passive indicated on the screen for this active effect. It shouldn't be a case where, hmm, do I check my gun reload? Is it a little bit faster? Is it a little bit slower, you know? It needs to be just on or off. And always there, always not, you know? Something as simple as the game knowing that it's active should just detect the buff and show it for you. And uh, it's definitely still the case here. So I don't, wanna, I don't want people to feel like, oh, you know, this is a great, cool new build. Uh, but it still has issues. Of course it does. Absolutely it does. But it is a cool build. Uh, and I like it. I like that there is uh, this type of all-in glass cannon. Because this is really glass cannon. Now, we're just firing. Uh, how many uh, shell hits do we have? Well, we have about... We're about 50% of the way there. We have four fires set. 67,000 damage. Done. Which is okay. Uh, there's an enemy DD firing in smoke. And uh, at this point, there is a concern that this enemy battleship would move outside of my gun range. If you would move outside of my gun range, and the Harugamo, which is in smoke, would have remained undetected and been firing inside of my gun range, I would not have benefited from the reload boost. Because the target needs to be spotted. It can't be something that is concealed. You know it's there, but the game is not revealing it. Uh, you need it to be visual, and of course, he's he's very close. So we're just going to try and pump HE damage into him, as you do, uh, while, of course, hoping to get another fire on the Montana. Friendly Wooster uses his radar, and uh, we're just going to line up a shot, and, you know, this is not going to be too hard, uh, but we're making good progress. We're nearly there, and we're only six minutes in. And remember, there is quite literally no gun bloom. There's no change. It doesn't matter whether you're firing or not. You have the exact same state for the ship. And there you go. We just activated the main battery reload boost. Uh, and now you're going to see that our gun reload is in the, um, what is it, 6.5-ish? 6.5 second? That's pretty good. With 50 plus millimeters of HE penetration at this distance. And the HE shells doing extra damage because, of course, we invested in it. Not half bad, right? Yeah, yeah. It, it feels like a legitimate build that could conceivably be run by players, and uh, that's awesome. Uh, obviously, the high gun velocity are going to be the ships that most players try and use with this anti-concealment. Uh, Hindenburg, Henri, the Soviets, those are good candidates. Uh, candidates that might not be as good. Although, it really is not necessarily a case where a cannon isn't good, as long as you play around your design. Which means it's situational. Uh, on other ships, like maybe the Des Moines or the Goliath, where they're going to have a harder time being able to do the damage they want to do without taking immense amount of damage. It's much easier for a Hindenburg and an Henri to use the extra gun range and the extra gun velocity and honestly, the size of the ship. The Hindenburg is actually a really small ship. It, it fits really nice, and it, it does great at maneuvering, and it has really good recovery. Uh, this is basically the second tankiest long-range ship that uh, maneuvers next to the Goliath. And, uh, you know, I, I obviously enjoy the Goliath. I enjoy the Hindenburg. I like the extra HE penetration. I could totally see, you know, maybe an extreme Goliath build for the upfront HE burst damage. You know, how high could that actually be? Giving up your concealment isn't as bad as maybe it would have been years prior because we have tools to allow for more tankiness or maneuverability or just, you know, better developed meta and better tools and understanding to perform that, you know? So I think this is the right time for an anti-concealment build to be created. I love it for the cruiser. I think it's a great option. Uh, I would love to see it potentially as an option for other classes. Maybe not in the same way. Not saying that this is not a good design. I think it works just fine. You could easily apply it to the other classes. But I would really like some skill that offers the same choice. 
whether to go full concealment and leverage that gameplay, you know, be an assassin, be unpredictable, or would you rather go with a anti-concealment and see where that takes you? Because there's a lot of skills that basically are irrelevant because they compete with concealment. So, uh, you know, this game's pretty much over. Um, clearly it was a co-op, you know, random co bot PTS game. So it's not the hardest game to play, but you can clearly see the rate of fire is very high and it continues to get higher. I wouldn't be surprised if it's nearly impossible if you play this build right to ever miss out on the reload boost that Luchins can give to cruisers. And, uh, that's pretty exciting for those of us who have Luchins. Now, the real problem is, what ship do I put him on? Because he's really good on pretty much every class of German ship, and I only have one of them. So, you know, that's a real good problem to have in design. I think this is absolutely a smashing success. This is one of the, the reasons why I am hopeful, because there are legitimate good choices being made, because we all already emphasize concealment well what if there was some skills that asked you you know what's your price <laughs> to not take concealment and i think that's a good question to ask players because that creates all of the different specs that could potentially exist in the game so honestly a plus i really enjoyed this and i would like to at least explore more i almost wish i could have alternative builds locked in on commanders so i didn't have to always spend money on doubloons to retrain them but you know what it's a good problem to have when you get more choices for the player. I just hope that Wargaming can do more synergistic skills in the future and maybe adjust some so it makes more sense with the current design. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you would like to check out more of my content, you can click the most recent or the most relevant uploads. You could also choose to subscribe to my channel. We do World of Warship videos, first impression, how-to, news, and review related. My North American recruit invite is on the screen. You can take advantage of that. I stream at twitch.tv slash Thank you. Happy holidays, and I hope you have a wonderful day.